Okay, let's uh, let's get let's get this party started. So I came across this video. I think somebody sent that to me from Tori Phantom. Um, apparently, they're a TikToker as well. Anyway, it's my family isn't allowed to hug my kids. Uh, I don't even understand why. Um, okay. Have conversations with my kids. I regularly have conversations with my kids about active consent. Consent is a big topic. Let's dive a little deeper. Oh, okay. I mean, my general take on forced hugging is that hugs are like a sign of respect, like a handshake, but more intimate. Uh, and you hug family. Um, it's not really that deep. You know, that's I'm going to make my kids hug like their grandmother, grandmothers. They're not going to have grandfathers. So. <laughs> uh, and other family. I believe very strongly in family. Um, and it's just like a greeting hello. Like, they don't have to hug them 17 times, but hellos and goodbyes, it's really not that deep. Um, yeah. That's it. Nothing that deep about it. When you were a kid, were you allowed to say no? Were you forced to kiss that grandma you saw once a year on the lips? Sussy not super chatted two dollars. Can you make papa gut bath water? I can make it every day, but I just don't sell it. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think they have to take showers. Anyway, I don't really remember being forced. I mean, I was told to. Uh, I don't know about force. I didn't like, get on the ground and start crying. The, the the worst part about hugging your family hello and goodbye has nothing to do with hugging them. It has everything to do with like interacting with them. It's like, huh, you just I don't know. There's like a weird layer of anxiety that I get when I have to say hello to everybody. It's just a bizarre social interaction. But I don't think that there's anything wrong with uncomfortable social interactions because if you don't do uncomfortable social interactions, you don't learn to do uncomfortable social interactions. Um and you kind of need to as a person or else you're going to be a weird introverted little lunatic. You kind of have to force yourself to socially interact. And this is part of it. I don't think it's that deep. I mean, you know, if you don't want to have your kid hug your family, whatever, like I don't care. I just think that it's good to teach your kid respect of family. And I think family is very important. Um, I was like raised obviously by a single mother, but also my family stepped in a lot. I have like very strong family values. I believe in family. I think it's very important, very powerful. So <clears throat> kind of just deal with it. It's not that deep, you know. No matter how uncomfortable you were, or were you ever tickled okay. to the point of tears and when you got upset, you were told, quit overreacting, you're being a baby. I mean, that's weird. Yeah, I wouldn't allow people to tickle my kid to tears. I tickle my wife to tears, but that's a um, consensual interaction. So... That's whatever. No, maybe it's just me, but my lack of okay. a right to autonomy has really made my life hard as an adult. I just feel like my lack of autonomy. I just, I don't know if I would. I just feel like it's not that deep. I mean, the right or condition of to self-govern. Like, yeah, but as a kid, you don't have full autonomy because you're an idiot. You have to kind of like grow up and learn. I just feel like it's just a hug. People pleasing and my fear of saying no and standing up for myself still affect me to this day. I still struggle with that, but I'm setting my kids up for success. But I think it sounds like a skill issue to me. It's incredibly important that our actions are consistent with our words when we're teaching consent. I don't want okay. my kids to think their right to bodily autonomy is conditional. My actions being consistent with my words is carried out through big things and little things. I can't tell my kids that they have a right to make decisions about their bodies and set boundaries and then violate them because I want hugs and snuggles. Yeah, you, you can. I guess it depends on the context. I mean, I don't know. Like again, I'm talking more of family greetings. If you're walking around, the, I mean, I don't really see an issue. Like, hey, give me a hug. I mean, it's not like I. The problem with like comparing it to, I don't know. When you use the word consent, it's very morally loaded, especially when you use it online. So, like, we're talking about when you say the word consent. I think it, I think it's not uncommon for you to be. Uh, the thought to be in your head of like, oh, sexual consent. And like, this is not that. I don't think that your kid's going to have issues with sexual consent because you make them hug family members. Uh, but okay. Now, that doesn't mean that every interaction we have is some big in-depth conversation. This but when I put my be. arms out for a hug, that's a question. That is asking them for consent without using words. Okay. When I was a kid, I was expected to hug and kiss everyone at a family function, despite how I felt about it. If I didn't yeah, want to, sure. I was either getting in trouble or guilt trip. When I Who cares? Yeah. No, I don't. I didn't want to either. But that, but just because you don't want to do something as a kid doesn't mean that you're going to be traumatized, okay? 
Like I didn't want to. I didn't want to go and stand up in front of people and do public speaking. I didn't even want to finish the Boy Scouts. My mother's like, "You have to," and that was gr- a great decision. I'm happy that she made me do that. You know what I mean? Like I feel like just like I didn't want to go to school a lot. I did that mostly, and then I dropped out. But that's besides the point. <laughs> Um, yeah, kiss everybody hello and goodbye. It's basically just a handshake with your body. Like, that's all it is. Like, it's not that big of a deal. When I was a kid, we would go to my family's house for Christmas Eve every year, which was okay. usually the only day of the year I saw this family. Okay. So, surprisingly, I didn't want to hug or kiss any of them because I didn't know them. They were virtually strangers to me. Okay. But my family that's didn't care family. about that because they loved me. So, there was this strict ex. Yes, that's what fell family works. And kids are like sociopaths. They don't have like any emotion. They slowly learn that as they get older. So yes. Expectation that I would give in and give hugs and kisses. And if I didn't, I would be in trouble. Nothing like forced affection to show your love. Am I right? I mean, there was a few years I was literally paid a quarter to give people hugs that I didn't know. You sound like a behavioral child. I don't know. (laughs) Like, okay, that's a little excessive that you would have to go be pushed to that level. You sound like a brat. I don't Okay. That made me uncomfortable. Honestly, oh, well. still kind of makes me feel uncomfortable now. My feelings okay. and autonomy were violated as a child. So that they weren't violated. You're just being taught to hug your fucking family. That my adult family members would feel better. I am never going to be a part of making my children feel that way. And I'm never going to let other adults try to make my children feel that way. Like if oh, you don't hug this, this uncle you haven't seen in a year, he's going to be sad. The thing is, I didn't care then and I don't care now. It's really not about sadness. It's really just a form of respect. But okay. Oh, and I carry that energy into my parenting. When I bring my kids to family functions, okay. we discuss how we might handle family interactions on the ride there. The most important thing being, you are in charge of your body the whole time. Before she mentioned, or they, I don't really, I'm sorry, I don't want to be invalidating, um, but they mentioned, I don't really know what they're, I'm just assuming that maybe, I don't know. Anyway, this person mentioned that like not everything is like a deep conversation with your kids and then like now you're having a deep conversation with your kids every time you ride to the, every time you take a ride out to um, whatever function. So do they ban on TikTok or something? I wanted to see what their pronouns were. That's where I would assume that they would be posted. Okay. okay. Or maybe they have me blocked. I have no idea. Wait, this is actually weird. Am I blocked? I'm so confused. So yeah, you have to be polite and say hello. But whether that hello comes with a wave or a high five or a hug, that's up to you and your comfort level. And if you're yeah. unsure of yourself or you're feeling insecure, you've got backup. Ah, I knew it there. They, them. Okay. I got that right. Just wanted to make sure. It's me. I'm, I'm the backup. Now you might okay. be thinking, it's not Scary. that big of a deal. It's not that uh, deep. How not. can an uncomfortable hug impact a person that much? It, it doesn't. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Or you might even be thinking, well, I had to have uncomfortable hugs with family members yeah. I hardly knew, and I turned out fine. Yes, nobody's getting a trauma from hugging a family member. And that might be true for you. It is true for everybody. Oh, but we don't get to decide how other people feel about things. I do. Listen, the, the, getting a hug is not a traumatic experience. It's just not ever in any capacity ever. It's uncomfortable and it's annoying at best. That's it. Okay. Um, I'm tired of when we have the, the, the conversation about trauma. It's like, well, everybody has different interpretations of different experiences. You're right, but we're talking about hugs. Okay, I'm never going to, we're, we're not going to cross the line where I'm ever going to like, you know what, maybe a hug is traumatic. It's not that deep. It's not that, um, it's not that deep, bro. Sis, them, whatever. And okay. we definitely Sorry. don't get to decide how different situations are going to impact our kids. On, but even beyond the awkward Christmas affection was this general inability to say no in situations so I was design. uncomfortable in. Ah, this greatly great, impacted great me one. in future situations. When I got older into my teen years and I was being pressured and I found myself in uncomfortable situations, I didn't know how to say no. I never had any practice. I thought I wasn't allowed to. So I didn't. I just went along with things and didn't protest in the same way I was taught to my entire childhood. The That's a different conversation about consent. Listen, I don't think it's fair to say, well, I was taught that I had to hug, so that means that I would, I mean, they they made it seem like every sexual interaction. I got older into my teen years and I was being pressured and I found myself in Yeah, it sounds like they're saying that because they were taught that they had to hug their family members, that was carried over into um, sexual encounters. Okay, at best, let me tell you something. At best, your your best argument is we should teach consent better, right? Um, you not being taught proper consent, which is a problem amongst kids, has nothing to do with the hug conversation. There's there's a really easy way to tell your kids that they have to hug family members because it's a sign of respect, uh, but also don't have to say yes to getting sexually like to, in sexual encounters. And the yeah, way you do that is you say, hey, you have to hug grandma, but you don't have to fuck anybody. You don't want to, right? It's not that it's not that deep. Um, it's not that deep. 
non comfortable yeah, situation. Yeah, this is yes, this is exactly what my wife is in there. She says, I feel like this is what you were often referred to as an overcorrection. Hundred percent, it's an overcorrection because you had a bad interaction with consent, when it's sexual consent. You're overcorrecting by telling your kids that they don't have to hug anybody at a family function. Like there's a like it's just a hug. And now if, if they don't have to cuddle, like if they're at a family function, like the fucking grandpa wants to, them to sit on their lap and decide, uh, teach your kid no, they don't have to do that, right? But like the hug is a sign of respect. It's and it's teaching your kids that the family matters, which was a pretty good show, by the way, until like the last season when it got really sciency and weird. <laughs> then it got really bizarre, but it was pretty good. I didn't know how to say no. I never had any practice. I thought I wasn't allowed to, so I didn't. I never had this problem because I was ugly as a kid, so. I just went along with things and didn't protest in the same way I was taught to my entire childhood. Sure. The trauma that caused me. So even now, I... I feel like their kids are going to grow up and always feel victimized and it's going to mess with them and then they're going to uh, have a resentment. Probably, yeah. After years of therapy and working on myself, I still struggle to say no and set boundaries. That's it. Just do better. I don't know what to tell you. We all struggle with things. <laughs> okay. I struggle to say no to food. That's my fucking problem. You know what I mean? Um, that's a normal thing. I think that people struggle to say no to boundaries. That's part of growing up too. And then you get better at it. Okay. So I don't. Okay. The, what it didn't start with the hugs. It's not the hug. It's not the hugs fault. So when it comes to my kids, I don't just let okay. them say no. I encourage it. Set your boundaries. Sure, Tell yeah. me how you feel. I want to hear it. So if I have a family member who's upset, I won't make my kid hug them. Well, their feelings are their responsibility, and my kid's well-being is mine. Seriously sure, though, yeah. I've heard adults tell children stop acting like a baby, and then turn around and throw a whole tantrum when they don't get the behavior they want out of a child. So if an ad oh, okay. adult is upset that my kid won't hug them, well, that's not my problem. Yeah, I mean, that's just disrespectful. That's how I interpret it. You know, that's just kind of the family. I mean, you don't have to hug. You can handshake. And I'm all for teaching your daughters to shake hands if they would prefer to shake hands instead of hugs. You know, you want to you want to do like uh, you want to if your argument is like because like here's the thing. I shake the men's hand when I go to parties and then I will, you know, hug and like kiss on the cheek women. That's a pretty normal thing. If my daughter says I want to do handshake instead of hug. Okay. You know, whatever. I'll tell him like this. My daughter wants to handshake instead of hug. That's fine because you're still you're still communicating that respect. That's really what it boils down to. You're communicating that with respect and love for your family. It doesn't matter if you only see them once a year. It's still family. Uh, blood is blood. You know, obviously, I have family members who I'm not necessarily close with as much now because they are not great. But <clears throat> fundamentally speaking, family is very important. That's a better conversation. If my daughter says, hey, I don't want a hug. I want a handshake. I'll say, okay. No problem. God bless. You know what I mean? Do you. It's not that big of a deal. I'm fine with that kind of stuff. But the hug is just a sign of familial respect and love. That's all it is. And hugs are very powerful. Like, honestly, hugs are very strong. We get very uh, positive emotions from hugs. It can be very something that's very uh, stress-releasing, you know? Yeah, you got to kiss the homies on the cheeks. That's true. On the butt cheeks. <laughs> An adult should have the emotional capacity to cope with the disappointment that comes from not getting a hug from a four-year-old. And okay. if they don't, well, my job is to parent my kids, not another adult. Have I had to speak yeah. up for one of my kids? You seem like you probably struggle with extended family. Kids and say, hey, she said she didn't want to hug you and you need to respect that. Yes. Would I do it again? Yes. And I do it do in you. front of my kids. Now, some folks might say it's inappropriate, but I think it's important oh. for my kids to see me stand up for them so they know it's okay to stand up for themselves. Yeah, I feel like um, you. this doesn't have to be an example of stand like a hug. You know, my mom just stood up for me in the past. She would make me hug people. But I have this story. I remember I was in the Boy Scouts still. and I was very active in my troop. Uh, but at the end of the night, I wouldn't play sports. They would just play sports to wind down while the parents came and pick up their kids. And instead, what I would do is I would hang out with the other younger kids and we would do merit badge work together. Um, and that's what I like to do at the end. And so because of that, I, I failed my, um, I believe it was my border review where they had, there's three different things. There's like a, you know, you, in order to move up to the next rank, you have to have, you do like an interview with like the elder, the older scouts. Uh, you do an interview with um, different people on like the committee. And then you do an interview with like your scoutmaster. <clears throat> and I failed the border review. I believe that's the one it was called. And they said, because I wasn't active in the troop. So my mother, my mother uh, said, you guys never show up except for maybe once a month. My kid's here every week. Um, and he's actually doing merit badge work at the end and you failed him because he doesn't play sports. And when they didn't take that answer, because this was also 20 years ago when the world was a little more sexist. Um, and, you know, there, there, there was like a really sexist piece of shit dick who was like, women can't talk to me like that. Like he was a real scumbag. My mom like just started fucking screaming at these motherfuckers uh, and they got really upset and they left. And then the next week I got another uh, 
you know, board a review with people who actually showed up every week and I passed. That's defending me. That's a really good way of, of you know, defending somebody on uh, something that actually matters, right? Is that I was taking, like, somebody, they, they denied me because I didn't play enough sports in the fucking Boy Scouts when I would, like, teach other kids merit badge work, merit badge work from a bunch of dumb fucking adults who never would show up, right? That's your parents setting boundaries and defending you, not go hug for a second. <laughs> That's different. Authority figures don't have authority over your body. A boundary set by a child holds just as much weight as an adult. A boundary set okay. by a child holds no, it doesn't. Just as much weight as a boundary set by an adult. It doesn't. I want to respect my kids' boundaries. Like my wife's always telling me that you know the like kids that's their room and this and that. The other thing, and we talk about the way that we're going to enforce boundaries. But boundaries are always going to be different. If my child sets a boundary that they don't want to go to school. Not a good boundary. You're going to violate that boundary. They're kids. They need to learn. They're not old enough to understand things. You need to teach them the way the world works. Now, there is a necessary power imbalance in a parent-child relationship. Yes. However, children have the right to set boundaries sure. and have their own autonomy. If a child sure. feels safe enough to, to say, give me space, I don't want a hug, don't touch me, that needs to be respected. Sure. On like every day-to-day -day basis. Like if, I'm, if my kid's in a grumpy mood, I'm like, give me a hug, and they don't want to give me a hug, like maybe that's fine. When we go to the family party, it's different. A kid because it's just the first, the intro and outro hug. Okay, that's what you have to do. Can't grow up without the ability to say no and set boundaries, and okay. then suddenly be expected to do so and do so effectively when they reach a certain age. I sure. teach my kids that they're in charge of their bodies when it comes to things like affection and physical play, but at the same time, when it comes to other folks, they have to get consent. This comes up most when my kids are playing together physically. We're talking tickle fights and roughhousing. When suddenly that switch happens from giggles to distress. Yeah, sure. This is uh, this is roughhousing. Obviously, you need consent with that. And I'm left saying, squirrely girls, read the room. Consent can be given or taken at any time, and the word sure. no isn't the only way to say no. We need to be aware of body language, attitude, and sure, comfort I levels. On that. a few occasions, one of my kids has come to me upset that her sister wouldn't give her a hug. To which my reply is always, if she doesn't give consent to a hug right now, you don't get to give her a hug. We have to respect people's boundaries. This is where we circle back to- Do you really use this language to like your four-year-old? Or do you just say, well, if such and such doesn't want to hug you, then you don't get a hug? You know, I feel like it doesn't need to be that fucking deep. What's going on, Amber? How are you doing, brother? Um, Coping with disappointment from not getting to hug a four-year-old. In my um, house, we talk about boundaries all the time. This, sound, this sounds like a horror. I really wish. I'm so happy I didn't grow up in your household. All you talk about is boundaries all the time. Could you imagine? I'm four. Oh, there was a TikTok. I wish I would show you guys. It's this TikTok of this mother. It's a joke. And this mother uh, is like, uh, she's playing. Cl what is the game called? Where you have, um, fuck, what's the game called? where you have to guess who the person is. Is it called Guess Who? And it's like, oh, uh, is your, does your person have glasses? And if they don't, you put all the people down with glasses. You know what game I'm talking about? So this mother made this like joke where she's like, does the person uh, look like they would be a victim of systemic racism to like their six-year-old? And the kid's like, I don't know what that is. It's like, do they look like a POC? And it's like, I don't know what that is. It's like, just... <laughs> Do they look like a racial minority in the United States? And like that, this is, this is that household is my point. This is like, it's insufferably over complex for a hug, you know? Like, even if you want to teach your kid boundaries of consent, you don't have to be so explicit all the time. You could just be like, hey, uh, Charlie wouldn't hug me. Okay, that's your problem. He didn't want to hug. He doesn't have to hug. Oh, guess who? It was right. Yeah, it's not, you don't have to be like, well, ba ba Charlie did, uh, doesn't give you the consent to uh, do this particular thing. And let's have a conversation and be really deep. It doesn't have to be that deep. It's a fucking four year old. They're like, you know, you, you know, you, 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 interpret language for them but hey it is what it is even as yeah. a parent i set boundaries i Me get too. touched out which can be tricky with three kids who love cuddles and while i also love cuddles i also get overwhelmed so i, I always tell my kids i am setting a boundary i don't think i would do that my kids were like overly like very affectionate i'm not gonna say overly and they wanted hugs all the time i think i would just maybe give them to them i don't know i guess we'll i am setting a boundary there. because i'm feeling overwhelmed right now i am setting a boundary because i just don't want to be touched right now oh, and so then i will okay. give my kids an option that they can take instead you can sit next <laughs> just go shut up little kid next to me not on top of me. One of the things I've loved to okay. realize is the impact these conversations really have on my kids. They talk about boundaries with each other. My middleest kiddo wow. has had some trouble with a friend at school who has trouble respecting her boundaries. Her friend is very hands-on touchy-feely and my daughter is very don't touch me. And so when her friend isn't respecting her boundaries, she talks to her and she talks to her teacher and she talks to me. Well, she talked to her sister too. And her sister said, you know, maybe she's still learning about boundaries like our littlest sister. Maybe mm -hmm. it would be helpful for you to explain your boundaries and say, these are my boundaries. Hearing little kids have these conversations is both adorable and endearing. They really do understand these concepts and the things that I say to them are really Yeah, you know it's really interesting. I was watching um I was watching TV the other day and my th and well, I was watching it and uh, Donald Trump was on the the TV. 
<clears throat> and he started like talking. It, it was nothing particularly interesting. We were just kind of had it on the background. My three year old comes to me and says, Papa, I need you to turn this off right now because Donald Trump is a racist, homophobic uh, president who believes that um, America, there's a conspiracy in America to deplatform him. And he's promoting these conspiracy theories that are destroying the United States and corrupting the minds of everybody involved. And even the most reasonable, level-headed Americans fall for the trap of thinking uh, that we need to engage in an insurrection. That's the energy I'm getting here. You know those stories on Twitter where it's like, my three-year-old stood up and said, I don't have a three-year-old. This is what I'm talking about. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about? The energy where people on Twitter are like, my, th my three-month-old said it, articulated that this and this is a bad thing. That's what I'm getting at. That's what it kind of feels like here. That's the energy that I'm getting from this conversation. <laughs> Really sinking in. It's also important to me that my kids understand consent isn't a commitment. You can revoke okay. consent at any time. The oh, second really? you're unhappy with an interaction, you can change your mind. Sure. You don't have to continue engaging in something because you're afraid of how it'll make the other person feel if you don't. And sure, that means sometimes someone is going to be sad about it, but that's okay. Right. We're not responsible for making other people feel better by sacrificing our own comfort. Sometimes it's not a bad thing to learn to sacrifice your own comfort for, at the expense of like, or for somebody else. Like, um, I'm not saying that you always should. Like, of course, you should teach kids, um, like, consent and that you can withdraw consent at any time. But sometimes it's okay to be a little uncomfortable. Like, there are times where I'm laying in bed, for instance, and my wife falls asleep on me. And I'm a little uncomfortable. But I want to let her sleep. So I just lay there for a little bit. And then eventually I'll move, which disrupts her. But, like, that kind of stuff. It's not that big of a deal. You know, like maybe I'm not in the mood to get up and go out. My wife wants to go out. So I get up and I go out for my wife, like very normal shit, you know, like that. Then my wife reciprocates that energy as well. In some instances, it's not bad to learn to not because the problem is, is that th like for real is that setting boundaries is a good idea. But this concept that you shouldn't sacrifice like your own comfort sometimes for other people is just going to lead to an overly selfish behaviors. Right? Like sometimes it's okay to sacrifice your comfort for another person. In fact, it's like not a bad idea. You need to learn that. What's going on, Linda? How are you doing? You need to learn how to do that. Right? When it comes to sex, that's a very different scenario. But sometimes I'll, you know, you do that too. Even in that, you know, sometimes my, you know, if, hey, listen, sometimes if my, if, if my wife wants, you know, Me just, just, if she wants to suffocate me, how can I say no, even if it's a little uncomfortable? <laughs> I'm saying that these things have nuance here, obviously. Um, and sometimes you need to learn how to be uncomfortable for another person. Okay. That's it. Same kids are roughhousing and suddenly that? we're not responsible for making other people feel better by sacrificing our own comfort. Same in kids are roughhousing and suddenly I hear one of them yell no or stop. I am immediately there to make sure that new boundary is heard and respected. No oh, shit, every parent does that. <laughs> okay. I am so quick to interject if I need to. Now, the ages yeah. my kids are at now, they're pretty good at responding appropriately. But sure. now and then, I have to be like, hey, I heard a stop. Stop means stop right now, not when you feel like it. Or, hey, that sounds like maybe she's not having fun anymore. Maybe back off and check in, huh? Every night before I go to bed, I go through my house and give everyone a kiss on the forehead. Last night, I got to my three-year-old's room, and she looked at me and said, no kiss. I said, you don't want a kiss? And she said, no. And I said, well, can I have one? And then she said, no. So I said... So I say, uh, kiss, move, and I'm kissing you on the head, bitch. That's what I'd say to my three-year-old. <laughs> Dad, okay, because no is a full sentence. I didn't need to ask why. No is a full sentence. I let my kids feel the power of that okay. by not asking for an explanation. Now, there is nuance here. There are some Jeez. no's that are conversation starters. But when it comes to their body, when it comes to affection, no just means no. Learning she wanted all the hugs sure. and kisses. Consent is conditional. Respecting boundaries is not. Consent should be enthusiastic and can be taken away at any time. Respecting someone's okay. boundaries is always a priority. And I know some folks might say it's not that deep but i think it is i would it's not but you've created it like you're explained like most of what you're saying here is just normal like you went on to this whole like a virtuous tirade about how you stop your kids from play fighting if one of them doesn't want to play fight anymore like oh, wow holy fuck like mom of the year i don't or <laughs> parent of the year sorry it's not <laughs> it's not that deep like you're overcorrecting. You're making the assertion that because you were forced to, to hug your family members, that you were put in uncomfortable that, that that caused you to be in really uncomfortable sexual scenarios. 
instead of the reality where like you just weren't taught consent like most people back in the day and we should do a better job of teaching that but when it comes to the like, hello and goodbye hugs for family that's a sign of familial respect and love for your family if you don't if you only see them once a year well guess what whose fucking fault is that that's the fault of the family and yourself if you only saw your uncle once a year then either your uncle or your parents need to make more of an effort to make sure that you see each other more often if that's a problem with you. That's it. It's not that deep. But family is family. And I think that overall, it's better to teach that family is very important than it is to play these fucking ridiculous games because not having family, not having people to lean on can be very isolating. And it's good to have like family that you can lean on i see my family when there's like parties which are like maybe three four or five times a year hugs and kisses handshakes depending on who it is again if you want to teach your daughter to shake hands instead nothing wrong with that um it's a sign of respect <laughs> it's a good thing to it's a good habit to get your kids into because if your kids don't learn to respect people uh especially family they're not going to have people to turn to when they need it so that's a that's kind of a family value that you potentially are depriving your kids of. Um, so, I mean, you know, good luck to them, I suppose. I'd rather do too much than too little. I want my kids to feel confident okay. in themselves and their autonomy. Being able to say okay. no and set boundaries when they're young will empower them to do so when they're older and the stakes are higher. It's important. Consent is an ongoing, ever-changing conversation with kids. I always keep it age-appropriate, but that conversation starts when they're toddlers and expands as they get older, as their social life changes, as their understanding of the world changes. Sure. I don't want to raise people-pleasers who are afraid to say no. I want to raise respectful people who are confident in setting boundaries and standing up for themselves in any situation. Anyway, sure. thanks for being here, friends. Like, comment, subscribe, share, hit the- Wow, that was an insufferable watch. Okay. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face But just as a friend There's nothing weird about that I want him to pee on my face